Okay, here we're going to find all x values that correspond to the maximums, the minimums, and the zeros for the function y equals one-fourth sine of one-half x. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is think about the period of this, of this function. So we'll have 2 pi divided by the absolute value of one-half. The absolute value of one-half is just one-half. So that's the same thing as 2 pi multiplied by 2, which is 4 pi. So that's going to be the period. The, uh, the amplitude uh, really doesn't matter for these. So I'm going to kind of use a graph here to think about them. So I'm going to think about my increments. 4 pi, I take the period, divide it by 4. That'll give me pi. So my increments are going to be in terms of pi. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. And again, this is just a very rough sketch to help me um, to help me identify these. So let's see, uh, if we were to graph this, if we substituted in x equals 0, sine of 0 is 0, so we would be at 0. Let's make this positive 1 fourth. Uh, down here, that'll be negative 1 fourth. Again, definitely not to scale. So at pi, it'll peak out. At 2 pi, it's back at 0. Um, at 3 pi, it'll bottom out, it'll be at negative 1 fourth. And then at 4 pi, it'll be at 0. So to get the maximums, the maximums are going to occur at the x-coordinate of pi. But then what we can do is, every time we, we complete one full period, right, so here's 5 pi, once we complete one full period, we're going to be back at the maximum. So pi is going to be one of the first places we get a maximum. But then if we add multiples of 4 pi, that'll take me back to, again, a new maximum. So the way we write that is we take pi plus 4 pi times n. And again, n is going to be an integer. And again, remember integers are just positive or negative whole numbers along with 0. So that's going to be where the maximums occur. To get the zeros, well, uh, 0 is certainly a 0. And notice here we don't have to go a complete period. We only have to go half of that, because every time we go half, we're going to be back at 0. So the zeros will, will occur at, well, 0 plus 2 pi times n. And we can just write that simply as 2 pi times n. Again, where n is an integer. And to get the minimums, we'll just do the same thing that we did with the maximums, same idea. So our first minimum here occurs at 3 pi. And every time we complete one full period, one complete period, we're going to be back at a minimum. So again, we'll just have to add a multiple of 4 pi, because that's the period. So the minimums occur at, th at the x-coordinates 3 pi plus 4 pi times n, again where n is an integer.